In the last lecture, we learned about the right concern when performing an insert operation. So we learned that using right concern, we can configure some options for the insert operation. And there we learned about one of the configurations, which is right configuration. And just like right, we can also set other configurations like journal and write timeout. So in this lecture, we are going to understand what is journal and how we can set journal using right concern and what do we mean by write timeout. And let's start with journal. So before we learn how we can configure a journal using right concern, let's first understand what a journal is. So in order to connect and work with databases in MongoDB server, we need to connect to MongoDB server using a client. A client can be Mongo shell, which we are using, or a client can also be MongoDB driver used by the programming language. And MongoDB server is where the MongoDB database is stored. Now let's say you want to insert some documents in the MongoDB database. For that, from the client, you will make an insert request using insert1 or insert many method. Here in this example, I'm using insert1 method to insert a single document in the collection. Now, once the insert request is made to the server, on the MongoDB server, we have something called as storage engine. And in case of MongoDB, the name of the storage engine is Wired Tiger. Now here, the name of the storage engine is not important. What is important is, what does this storage engine do? So the storage engine in MongoDB is responsible for writing the inserted data on the disk, that is to the database file, and also for managing the data in the memory, that is in the RAM. So when you insert a document using insert one or insert many, the document which you are trying to insert, it is first written to RAM. It is not directly written to the disk in the MongoDB server. First, it is written to RAM. And this is because working with RAM is faster than working with files on the disk. But eventually, the data which we are inserting, that will also be written to the disk, that is, to the database file. The disk or the database file is where the data will be permanently stored. So it's important that the data gets written to the disk, to the database file. Now, apart from RAM and disk, there is one more additional file called journal that the storage engine manages. This file is like a to-do file for storage engine. The journal can be used to save operations which the storage engine might need to perform later, like inserting or updating a document. Now, the storage engine is aware that it needs to store the data on the disk, which we are sending with the insert1 or insert many method. That's because the insert operation has been acknowledged and the data is stored in the RAM. So storage engine does not need a journal for that. It is already aware that it has to perform a write operation onto the disk. The use of journal file comes into picture when the server goes down for some reason, when the insert operation is still in progress. And since the server is down, the operation will be cancelled. So what's happening here is before the server went down, the data was written in RAM, but it has not yet been written to the disk, to the database file. And at this point, for some reason, the server went down. Now, when the server comes back online, the RAM might have been wiped out by then. So now, storage engine does not know which data it has to insert, which came with the insert request before the server went down. So before the server went down, server received an insert request. It was present in the RAM. It was not written to the disk yet. It was present in the RAM, but then the server went down. And when the server restarted, by that time, the data which was in the RAM, that has been wiped out. So the data was not written to the disk, to the database file. And now, when the server is online, storage engine does not know which data it has to write to the database file. And this is where the journal file comes into picture. The journal stores a list of to-do tasks which the storage engine has to perform. So once the server is online again, the storage engine will look into this journal file, which is a real file on the server. And this file has saved a list of tasks which the storage engine needs to perform. So before the server went offline and when we sent an insert request, 
the data was present in the RAM and the journal was also updated with a task that that data which is present in RAM has to be written to the database file. So this task was written to the journal. And now once the server is back online, the storage engine is going to look into that journal file. It is going to find all the to-do lists there and it is going to perform all those operations one after the other. And one of the operations there was to store the document which came with the insert request to the disk. Okay, so this is where the importance of journal file comes into picture. Now what will happen if this insert operation was not written to the journal before the server went offline? In that case, the storage engine will have no way to know that it has to write a document to the disk because the data was also flushed from the RAM after the server restarted. So the basic idea of journal is to store a to-do list which the storage engine needs to do in case something goes wrong on the server and server restarts. In that case, the storage engine, it is going to look for this journal file and whatever to-do operations will be there in the journal file, it is going to perform and it is going to update the disk. Now, you might ask, why do we need to write the to-do list in a journal and not in the database file? That's because writing into the database file is more performance intensive. The journal stores the to-do list in single lines, which describes the insert, update or delete operations. Writing into the database file is a bit complex task because there you need to find a right position to insert a document. You also need to update indexes on your collection and there are other stuffs as well. So writing to-do tasks to a database file will simply take longer time. But adding a to-do list in a journal is faster. And that's why the to-do list is written to the journal and not to the database file. So I hope you now understand what is the use of a journal in MongoDB database. Now the next question is, how do we set the configuration for using journal with right concern? Because by default, storage engine does not use journal. If you want to use journal, you need to configure it with your insert operations. And how can we configure it? So in the last lecture, we learned about right concern. So using this right concern, we set the right configuration. In the same way, we also have this journal configuration. We are simply calling it as J. By default, it is undefined. And when the journal, this J is undefined, that means the storage engine is not going to use journal for insert operations but we can also set it to true. So by default, this journal, this J is undefined, which is the default behavior. But if you want to use journal, you need to set it to true. And in that case, you are asking MongoDB server to report a success for any write operation only if the write operation is acknowledged and it is also written to the journal. And with that, we have a greater security that this write operation will happen and it will succeed even if the server faces some issues during the write operation. One thing you need to remember is that when you enable journal, the write operation will be secure, but it might take a little more time in completion because now there is one extra task that the server has to perform of saving the write operation to the journal. So it might make the insert operation a little slower, but it will be secure. Alright, so here we learned about journal in MongoDB on a very high level. Of course, there is a lot which is happening behind the scenes, but this is all you need to understand for now about journals. Finally, there is also a third configuration for the right concern, which is not directly related to journal. And that is W timeout, which stands for write timeout. You can use this option to specify a timeout in milliseconds for the write operation. And if the write operation does not complete within the specified timeout, an error will be returned by the MongoDB server. So we might want to set this option when there is some network problem and after a certain time, we might want to cancel the insert operation and show user an error message implying that the insert did not happen and a timeout occurred. And also if you set the timeout value too low, the user might get the timeout error even if the insertion happened successfully. Therefore, it's very important that you know what timeout value you want to use. Alright, so in the previous lecture and in this lecture, 
we learned why write concern is important and how we can configure it for a higher data security. With write concern, it gives us data durability. That means it helps us ensure that the data is durable and it won't be lost in case of failures like system crash or network outages. And it also gives us data consistency. By specifying the appropriate write concern, we can control the data consistency level of the data across different nodes in a replica set or sharded cluster. And another very important point which you need to remember is write concern is also applicable for updates and deletes. It is not only applicable for inserts, it is also applicable for updates and deletes. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.